Welcome to the next episode of our podcast, Indiana is Ag Plus Bio Plus Science. It's presented by Agrinovis Indiana and Inside Indiana Business. I'm Gary Dick, the host of Inside Indiana Business, also the host of this weekly podcast where we have in-depth conversations with leaders, innovators, entrepreneurs in Indiana's ag bioscience sector. It's the sector where food, agriculture, science, and technology all converge. This week, excited to sit down with an ag entrepreneur, Zach James, the founder of Rabbit Tractors. And Zach, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming down from Northwest Indiana. Uh, you have an interesting path to the world of agriculture. So undergrad, I think in finance at IU. Yep, I was a Kelly grad. Michigan Law School. Mm-hmm. How in the heck did you end up in agriculture? You know, I was I was studying securities and, and corporate governance type law at, at Michigan, and I the plan was to go. You know, if you wanted to practice at the level I wanted to practice at, you'd have to move to New York. And I just, I didn't really want to get out of Indiana. So I was kind of looking for a way to where I could go to New York for a few years, cut my teeth, build a network, and then get back into Indiana somehow, specifically, you know, rural Indiana or, or the area I'm from. Um, and so what I was looking at was the growth of institutional investment in farmland, right? The big trend in growing of farmers where every year the average age of a farmer gets about a year older. There are no new people really coming into farming. Um, and what's happening is hedge funds and other institutional investors are coming in and buying that up. So I was trying to figure out a way to position myself as sort of a middleman in that market, right? The operational connection between the farmland, the farmer in Indiana, and the New York investment banker. Uh, and in doing that, I was looking at you know the farming business model and how could I have a competitive advantage. And what I figured was that right now we're limited, or a farmer's limited in the amount of range you can farm. It's about 30 miles, give or, you know, it depends on the roads and stuff, but rough average is 30 miles radius of where he's located. He can economically drive his equipment. So I figured if I could become more than just a county farmer, that 30 mile radius farmer, but a farmer across all of Indiana, if I could move my equipment easier, I would have an advantage in going to these investors and saying, you don't need a dozen farmers. You can just have me, your one point of contact, and we can farm all of Indiana. We can search all of Indiana and all of Illinois for farmland. Um, so and trying to think, how do you get your equipment more mobile? Came up with the idea of, okay, well, the tractors need to be smaller, right? Because as of now, you need a wide load permit to move them over 100 miles. If you're driving them at nighttime, you need, you know, trailer vehicles and stuff like that. And it's a, it's a huge hassle. Um, and autonomy was the key to that. It was a technology that's just now coming forward that's going to allow us to drive multiple small units instead of one really large one. So now I, I, I had a idea of where I wanted to get and I needed a whole new product to do it and it in of itself was a huge revolutionary thing so I decided to first build the product and hopefully one day get to the other, other yeah. state and obviously your your upbringing uh, you know agriculture rural Indiana made a real impact on you and your, your your outlook so you you wanted to get back kind of get back to your roots basically I think one of the big advantages and the way I kind of explain what I do to people is that you know in Silicon Valley they iterate hard or they iterate software real quick they can make an app you know, go go in a you know, coffee shop, work for a few days, make a new one, and then try something differently. The Indiana equivalent to that is I can go into a barn, I can go into a shop, I can get my buddy who has a TIG welder to come in, and we can build some cool piece of hardware and go try it out. And that, that's really what I'm trying to capitalize on is the ability of a person in the Midwest to do that, to iterate hardware yeah. quickly. All right, let's talk about rabbit tractors. Uh, you've given us kind of the, the, the idea, the inspiration. Where, where are you in development? And, and talk about what, what makes rabbit tractors uh, so attractive. Yeah, so we've been around for about two years now. We started right when I got out of law school, as you had mentioned. Um, and really, just it was a, just a concept then. It was the idea that if you ran multiple small machines, you'd be more efficient. And that was it. So we went through, first did an accelerator out in Iowa, the Iowa Agritech Accelerator, where we worked with some big uh, equipment manufacturers to kind of flesh out the economics behind it. Then we went down to Tennessee and worked an accelerator there with farmers to figure out the adoption model of how we were going to get from these tractors we are now to a decade down the road farming with these sw- what we call swarms of tractors. And then only after that, that, that was about the first year of what we did, was just that discovery work. And then only after that did we just start designing a product, iterating that hardware. And so at, at this point, we've built a few prototypes, iterated the hardware design about three times, and now we're getting pretty close to a design for manufacture prototype. And we're going to release that on a limited commercial basis this fall with, a, with actually we're going to go out and do services with it. And then a rental basis, 2020 and the next following years, um, that rental business model being so we can scale 
quicker without having to put more, put investment into uh, manufacturing. You talk about swarms of tractors, right? And this, the whole concept is these rabbit tractors are smaller. You can uh, put multiple units uh, on basically traditional transportation vehicles, right? Yeah, so the, the, the problem we're solving is the problem of large tractors, right? The, the modern tractor weighs over 20 tons. It costs half a million dollars, and we're only using it two, three weeks out of the year. And even then, when we're using it, we're using it extremely inefficient. Within the field, a tractor is actually only getting work done 67% of the time because it takes so long to turn it around, get it lined up, get it go back going the other way, breakdowns, things like that. And then, because these machines are so large and you have so much capacity tied up in, tied up in one unit, we're spending almost just as much time getting from location to location than we are actually servicing the lo- those locations. And the reason that is is because everything's been tied with labor. We have, you know, minimized labor costs, maximized the work that one farmer could get done. With autonomy, that's no longer the case, right? We can run multiple small machines across an entire operation. And so that's how I describe it. They're, they're, we're building small tractors that are also autonomous. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think a really good example of a use case would be, you know, all of May, no one could plan. We were at 30% planning about a week ago. And that was a largely just a mechanical problem. The tractors weighed too much. You put them on the soil, they were going to break down. They were going to get stuck. These tractors, because ours weigh so much less, you could have been planting May 1st with our units. As long as, you know, the first few inches are dry enough that this, the seed's not going to flood out, you can be on the field working the ground with these smaller tractors. You uh, were part of Agrinovis's Ag Plus Bio Plus Science uh, startup showcase and uh, were even recognized as a people's choice a winner. With Indiana's agriculture or the entrepreneurial ecosystem growing, what kind of additional support, in your view, is needed to advance your business and, you know, innovators and in, in companies like yours to grow in Indiana? What I would really like to see mostly is more corporate involvement and beta customer involvement. You know, I, I think there's a sort, of, sort of a conservative mindset in Indiana where these wild business concepts, they're kind of hard to get in and, and get people to appreciate and kind of and put their weight behind. So, um, you know... If the ecosystem could grow a little more to start involving the corporates we have around the state for demos, for trials, for evaluation purposes, that would help a a good deal in our development and give us some credibility with customers. And then the other side of that would be just setting up immediate trials with customers. We've worked in other states with programs where the Department of Agriculture actually helps us, it helps fund us go out and work with farmers, right? They'll, they'll give the farmers money to experiment on new technologies. And that low risk way to, for a farmer to test out our technology mm-hmm. is pretty crucial to what we're doing. Yeah. You mentioned that you participated in multiple uh, pitch contests, accelerator programs. You talked about demo days. What's the value in those things to you? Accelerators, I think the value there is their first dollar in, firstly, which is you know obviously important. You need money to pay your lawyers. You need money to form the corporation, you know, get your patent, stuff like that. And, and at that stage, you really can't raise any other way. It also it lends uh, an air credibility to what you're doing, right? If there's a known accelerator and they go through and they've you've gone through their diligence process and they've vetted you, and that now you approach suppliers and you have that you know sort of stamp of approval, it helps. You know, b- before I went through an accelerator. I would call hydraulics companies and say, hey, I need help designing this 150 horsepower hydraulic system for a different iteration of our tractor. And I would never get a call back. You know, but when they could Google my name and they had, I show up on a couple of news articles, then then I'd start to get that credibility that if people would realize that, okay, this pie in the sky idea, it's actually something. People are actually putting money into this. Mm-hmm. And then I think there's also, accelerators also all offer different expertises and each one's specific to their specific expertise. Like I said, I did the one in Iowa. They put me in touch with industry incumbents where I could vet that part of it. The one in, one in Tennessee put me in touch with actual customers, with actual farmers. And then actually I, I went overseas and did one where I focused on manufacturing, figuring out how to set up an overseas R&D team for, you know, to outsource some of our development process, how to go to China and source parts and get things manufactured over there. 2019 is going to be a big year for you guys. Talk about that next, those next strategic moves and how, how you see things uh, going here over the next year or several years. Yeah, we're just now getting a commercialization with our product, right? We, we built the minimum viable product tractor and we're right now finishing up, finishing up a few implements we're putting, actually going to put onto the tractor. So what we have is a soil sampler and a, uh, a cover crop seeder, a seeder that actually go down the rows of corn and plant the cover crop in early August before you actually harvest the corn. We're going to release those on a limited basis this fall, more, mostly just beta trial runs. Mm-hmm. And then in 2020, we're gonna actually we're going to really start to commercialize it with multiple units across a, a multi-state market.
Very good. Great example of innovation in agriculture happening uh, in Indiana. Zach James is the founder of ag bioscience startup Rabbit Tractors up in Lake County. Are you just west or east of Crown Point? Just west of Crown Point. Just west on US 41? Yes, that's us. Well, Zach, fascinating story in your path to get where you are is a a, a really cool story as well. We'll be following uh, that story. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me. All right. And thank you for joining us once again this week on the Ag Plus Bio Plus Science podcast. It's a weekly production partnership between Agrinovas Indiana and and Inside Indiana Business. Also, you can keep up to date with Agrinovas by following them on Twitter and Instagram at Agrinovasin. You can also find uh, Agrinovas on LinkedIn, Facebook, and YouTube. Thanks for joining us this week. I'm Gary Dick. We'll see you next time. This podcast is a product of Inside Indiana Business, hosted by Gary Dick, produced by Libby Fritz and Joe Ullery, and was recorded on location at Launch Fishers. More people get Indiana Business News from inside Indiana Business than any other source.